Hello and welcome to PlayStation Access. My name's Rosie and I'm about to pour my heart out to you, so get ready. When I look back on some of my most treasured games on PS4, there have been many. Sorry, my darlings, not today. But there is one that holds a very special place in my heart. One which still, after five years, gets my heart racing with excitement, love and everything else that is good. And that game is Bloodborne. Previously on the channel, I have called it my game of the generation, platinumed it on a stream, and I've talked about it in the office more times than I've been killed by a beast. But why is it that I can't stop talking about this game? Well, let me take you back to the days of 2015. I didn't get a PS4 on launch, sadly, as I was just starting to get into my first full-time role. You know, learning how to be an adult. And was spending my money on driving lessons and saving for the future. But when the time came when all I was thinking was, okay, I really want a PS4 now, my brother, Jim, was playing Bloodborne, a game which he would not stop talking about. I watched the trailers for the game and thought, oh no, this looks really scary, can I play this? As I was a little scaredy pants at the time. Until he said, Look, have you ever played Nightmare Creatures before? Why am I asking? Of course you have. I know you have because I used to live with you and I hated every second of it. Well, Bloodborne is basically Nightmare Creatures, but way better. So go and play it. Don't be such a wuss. Go play. Go, 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 gadget, play Bloodborne. For some context, Nightmare Creatures is a game on the PlayStation 1 I used to watch him and my dad play. It was terrifying, but I just wanted to be involved. <laughs> Anyway, once he made this link, I was not scared by it so much, but more intrigued. Now I wanted to see if this was like Nightmare Creatures. I wanted to see how a gothic world looked on PS4. I wanted to play my first From Software game. So when I purchased a PS4, Jim ended up getting the Nightmare Edition of the game and gave me his original copy. Thanks, Jim. And I was finally able to play it. And it did not mix with me at first. I loved the gothic art design of the game, but I found it too hard. I thought, you know what, I'm sure this game is great, but maybe it's just not for me. You could probably guess this, but I was stuck in the first area of Yharnam, where there's a beast being burnt at a stake and there are lots of villagers roaming around. I got close to giving up here, at the point of saying one more try and I'm done. Before I got past it... But I could not celebrate, for this happy chappy arrived. The Cleric Beast. My experience with the Cleric Beast was unique. No other boss fight in any game has put me in such a frenzy. I was sweating, shaking, screaming, and bright red in the face. Jim decided to come round to help me, as he could not understand why I was finding it so hard and wanted me to continue playing. And of course, whilst he was on his way, I did it. He opened my bedroom door to see me with the biggest grin, bright red in the face, sweating and shaking. Even my mum asked if I did the thing in the game. It was a big moment for me, not only as it was the hardest boss I'd faced at the time, my first Soulsborne victory and I just felt really, really blooming proud, but it got me completely hooked. And the rest of Bloodborne was history. After this moment, I constantly talked to Jim about my playthrough, I played it all summer when I should have gone outside and enjoyed the fresh air, I made a video where I ranted about it for 30 minutes which never saw the light of day, I was trying to draw the cleric beast, I was playing the game with my friend who liked the universe but preferred playing it in co-op, I was just blah 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 blah. It was the first modern game at the time I really wanted to cover in a journalistic way. Prior to this, before the access days, I mainly talked about PlayStation 1 and 2 games. But Bloodborne changed that and made me think, oh my god, this is the PlayStation 4. I realise that so far I have only talked about my introduction to Bloodborne, but that's because it's such an integral part of my journey with the game. Yes, you can say that's the same for all games, the introduction is part of what keeps you engaged, it's trying to ease you into the experience. This is especially true with Soulsborne games, as players adjust to their unique structure, challenge and progression. But this is one of the few introductions to a game which has made me feel this many emotions. Fear, joy, frustration, excitement, stress, love, doubt, every emotion that exists, I had it in Yharnam alone. And it's something I would never have expected from a game which at first I was thinking... Uh... But please don't get me wrong, Bloodborne has these memorable moments for me throughout. I have recently completed my second playthrough on New Game Plus, and I was amazed by how many things stuck with me, and how many things still bewildered me. 
Being shocked as I fell down the slope in the forbidden woods, hearing the cleric beast cry for the first time as you climb your first ladder. The sky in the hunter's dream changing after a certain event. The family of spiders who live in the nightmare of Mensis. The routes I used to take to grind to level up. I was just amazed how all of these locations were still so fresh in my mind, as if they were actual places I visited. And when I played it recently with my friend Bart, I was telling him everything that happened to me in all of these locations. He wasn't that fussed as he was too focused on the game, I don't blame him, but I couldn't help it. Walking these routes was like reading passages in a diary I wrote five years ago. But don't worry, I didn't tell him about all the jump scares. The locations in this game are simply wonderful and all tell their own story. You traverse through crooked, Victorian-esque streets, dark, unsettling woods, giant snowy castles, corpse-filled nightmares, a big school. All of these areas are rich in mystery and eeriness, and it only draws you into them more and more. What happened to these students? Who were all these villagers before they became beasts? What do these statues symbolise? These are all questions you'll be pondering in some form, even while screaming. Ah, giant pig, giant pig, why is there a giant screaming pig? And as you ponder these questions, you find yourself going deeper and deeper into these worlds. Yes, you are terrified as you want to keep all of those blood echoes you've gained from killing enemies, but this fear helps push you forward to find the next lantern. The worlds are just so inviting, and the game loves tempting you to risk your hard work for one tiny thing which could be a game changer. There could be a hidden item staring at you from afar, which you know is a trap, but what if it's going to be something amazing? A path may split in multiple directions, but will you find a secret, your death, or even your next lantern? You naturally find yourself looking at every nook and cranny to find secrets in these worlds, and it's not as if these secrets are necessarily small either. You could find items which will aid you, characters who will deepen the lore, and even entire locations. Canehurst Castle? Missable. Upper Cathedral Ward? Missable. The Hunter's Nightmare? Missable. Yes, The Hunter's Nightmare is part of the DLC The Old Hunters, but you can still miss it if you've purchased it but don't know what you're doing. And all of these secrets are so special to me, as they remind me of the time when I excitedly talked to my brother about my journey with this game. My fondest memory being exploring Canehurst Castle, which I wouldn't have found if it wasn't for him. I had the invitation to go to the castle, but was a lemon and didn't read the item description. He told me to go to a specific location in Henwick Charnel Lane, which triggered a brilliantly mysterious cutscene with a horse and carriage, and was then greeted by a beautiful snowy land. I was absolutely mind blown. This isn't a secret room or a character or an item, this is a whole level. A whole level filled with spooky visuals, new enemies, mysteries, and even more secrets! And the fact I nearly missed it is saddening. But the best things you discover are, of course, the bosses. Have mercy. Have mercy upon us. I mean, what are some of these things? Everyone remembers their first experiences with the bosses in this game, be it because you defeated it first time, did the opposite and died again and again and again, found it accidentally, was terrified of it, or maybe you fell in love with it. I fell in love with Mikolash for some reason. I think I just love his creepy voice. No one can catch us. No one can stop us now. But despite your emotion towards these bosses, they're all brilliant, look horrifyingly good, and all have such interesting backstories. One moment you could be fighting a character like Father Gascoigne, a man who became so obsessed with the hunt he forgot everything about his family, then his wife went to look for him but it was too late and she died, and then you have to tell his daughter who's now alone, and oh by the way he became a beast himself due to the bloodlust and you killed him, and it's all so sad! And the next moment you could be fighting Amygdala. A creature who's named after a part of your brain, has really long limbs and so many holes in its face! Why are there so many holes in its face? But for me, there was nothing like the adrenaline I got running into a boss for the first time. Just walking around, surviving, and then sometimes there's an epic cutscene and oh hello health bar you cheeky thing! Then there's the excitement of actually doing well in these fights. 
Bloodborne's combat is quick and risky. You can't defend, sometimes enemies won't let you breathe and constantly stay as close to you as possible, and your ranged weapons, such as your pistol, aren't for attacking, but counter-attacking. You are constantly forced to risk your life going face to face with all these bosses, which just makes everything seem so much more impactful to me. When you get the timing right for a visceral attack, it feels fantastic. Learning their weaknesses, timing your dodges perfectly, even deciding on how you start the fight, charging full speed ahead or holding back. Everything is go, 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 go. And it's so exhilarating. It was these fights which made me pumped to progress, and it was their designs which made me want to learn more about them. I wanted more bosses! At the end of the game, there is a final, final boss you can access if you consume three of a certain item. On my first playthrough, I didn't know about this and was genuinely sad that I couldn't experience it. Then again, I was also thrilled that I beat the game, so it's not all that bad. But I still remember how I originally approached all of these bosses and how I genuinely cheered when I defeated them. And as I'm currently playing through the DLC, all of these original emotions are coming back. And it's still wonderful. However, you can't talk about how special the boss battles are without mentioning a small little detail you may have missed as it's so tiny. The music. Oh, the music, it's so, so good. I think one of the reasons this music is so impactful is not only because it's phenomenal, but also, please consider this. Most of the game has no music. You hear atmospheric noises in the world, such as fire, bell chimes, or monsters roaming around. But the music really only comes in when you're fighting these big scary battles, and it's overwhelming! Still today, I get goosebumps thanks to it. I could talk about why I love all of these songs, but today I'd like to talk to you about my favourite track, The First Hunter, which plays as you fight German. It starts off having a feeling of woe, as this man who once mentored you and welcomed you into this nightmare is now your enemy. It complemented my feelings of sadness, made me look on how far I've come as a hunter, and was calm enough that I could focus on what his attack pattern was. And then, just as you get used to him... It's so good, it's so, 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 so good! How can the music predict when you will start to get fully involved with the fight? How does it still have this tragic feeling to it? How does it still give me goosebumps whenever I hear it? I was listening to this song for weeks after I first heard it. I even purchased the CD so I could listen to it in the car. And a couple of years ago, I went to the PlayStation concert in London. I had no idea what to expect, it was my first concert I'd been to where they played music from video games, and they played The First Hunter with an orchestra, there, right in front of me, in a huge concert hall. My mouth was on the floor, the goosebumps came back, I was leaning forward in my seat, eyes glued to the orchestra, thinking of this fight and my first experience with it, and I was nearly in tears. The emotions were very high. I never thought that this song could get any better, but there I was, being completely swallowed by it. And again, it's a moment I'll never forget. I think you get the gist of where I've been going with this video. The reason Bloodborne is so special to me is because it's a world filled with memories and emotions. The most stressed I've been in my life fighting the Cleric Beast, finding secrets and feeling so rewarded for it, itching to learn more and more about the plot, which is incredible by the way, I highly recommend it, talking about it with my brother, beating bosses for the first time, beating bosses after many attempts, playing it with friends, beating the game, there are just so many experiences I have rammed into it. And every time something associated with Bloodborne comes up, these emotions and memories just come flooding back. I mentioned earlier that I've been playing it recently with my friend Bart, and as we've been playing, I found that I was performing the role that my brother played for me five years ago. I was rooting for him to beat the Cleric Beast, saying how he should look at it like a test. Once he'd beaten it, he'd see the game in a whole new light. I was showing him shortcuts he could take, telling him tidbits about the plot, not telling him everything, just to hear his reactions to events. And now I have even more memories from playing it with him. 
Bloodborne is my treasure trove of emotions and memories, which I get to revisit every time I play. The perfect place for a hunter, wouldn't you say? And that's why Bloodborne will always be my most special game on PS4. Did you share similar experiences? Which moments stick out for you? Let me know in the comments. Please like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this, and hit that notification bell so that you stay up to date with the world of PlayStation. Thank you so much for watching, and fear the old blood. PlayStation.